Okay, that finishes that section. So we're now going to go on to uh, tunnel trader questions and other questions. Okay, I've got a few pre-asked questions here, which we're going to go through first. Uh, the first one is, um, are there any binary betting brokers that allow you to use stops and limits to binary bets? IG does not. You have to watch all the time. I've actually had lunch with IG several times, and I've pushed, pushed the case for this because it's so, be so useful to have limits. You know, it'd be so good to have, you know, you're in a tunnel trade, you've sold it at, I don't know, 95, whatever it is, and you want to get out at 10, say, or 15 or 20. Um, and that would just be so incredibly useful. Maybe they want you to do that. Maybe they, they don't want you to be able to grab that profit, even though it doesn't, might cost them a bit because it may go to zero. Uh, Finspress used to do it. Um, they used to offer limits, not stops. I think stops are a problem because the binary prices are difficult to justify. I mean, they're reasonable prices, but you know, it depends on volatility, it depends on where the market is in relation to the prior close, a whole load of things. Um, and if a client phoned up and said, look, this is unreasonable, why, why have I been stopped out, blah, 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 you know, going on about volatility and, and very esoteric things like that uh, may well not do the trick. So I think they're quite right not to do stops, to be honest. But limits, you know, limits your choice. You know, you, so there's no reason that that argument just fails to work with limits. Um, they would, in fact, be a huge advantage, but sadly, sadly not. Um, right, the next one. Uh, Mark, I oh, know, sorry, this is another, another. well, this is actually a general question. Getting the courage to stop procrast sorry, procrastinating uh, with paper trading and start tunnel trading for real, with real money. Um, I think lack of basic computer confidence and previous bad experience. Actually, whatever the reasons, um, the point really is to start very small. IG index have something called trade sense. You can trade for pennies and then move ahead as you make money. So test out, your, in fact, even on paper, you know, this is always a good idea. You test out what you're doing on paper, um, then go on to the market. To, I mean, but trade sense in this case, pennies, so it doesn't really matter very much. Uh, although, of course, all money matters to some, some extent. Uh, Mark, any comments on this? No, that, that, that's, um, I would say, you know, with all sort of things, uh, with all sort of business, you know, it's very important to test the water first. Um, you know, don't commit everything. Don't put all your eggs into one basket. Um, and as I said, that, that applies to every single, uh, any, any kind of business you're doing, if, if, even if it's a, you know, a, a different entrepreneurial venture. Okay, on the next question. Uh, most UK new releases at 9.30, they have high importance, it's open, open, okay to just open the trade at best price at 8 a.m. Um, hmm. Not really, because, you know, the, the price is a key part of any strategy. Um, it's, uh, you know, unless you get the right price, because everything works on, on a probability basis, not every trade works out. Um, and if you're selling at sort of 90 times, times you're not going to hit number of successes aren't going to be as high as if you sell at 60 times, but, but certainly you don't want to risk too much. You know, I'm talking about binary bets, so you're selling at 90 or 60. Uh, with a binary bet, uh, you know, the maximum bet you can get to is 100, so if you're selling at 60, you can lose 40, sell at 90, you can lose 10. Um, I have to say also that, uh, um, I mean, you mentioned that you trade the shoot on some news days, um, but hardly any movements. I think that was in December 2010. December is often a very quiet, uh, a very quiet time. Uh, holiday trading, not the best time really, um, and and that's an important factor. Also, I mean, the best thing really is to monitor the news and monitor the subsequent market moves to see which have impact. Uh, you also need to be aware that even the most extreme news, in some cases, it may not move the market if it's mid in line with market expectation, which is the point we sort of covered I covered before. Okay, okay. What does parity mean in the context of tunnel trading? Uh, it means that the FTSE is resting at a change around zero for the day. Uh, on FTSE, it um, it closes at a level and it and opens the previous day at, at the same level. Um, so it's you know it's, it's when the change is, is less than plus 10 or, or more than minus 10, I minus 5, minus 6. Um, what I want to point is I would just mention that IG's prices, i.e. their, their futures daily, daily FTSE price, um, is not the same as the official FTSE. It's very, very close, but it's not the same. Um, and this is when people are confused because the change the change on the the IG rolling price is always, or is almost always, different from the change on the actual official FTSE price, um, and that's the reason. So you need to be looking at the official FTSE, uh, not the IG price, because uh, the tunnel is based on the official FTSE and not the IG price. Uh, when choosing a tunnel trade, how do you set the margins? Well, basically, um, it's a question of, of getting a good price and getting the right width. You want, you want the narrowest width you can get. Either the, you know, a 50-50 tunnel is narrower than a 100-100 tunnel, um, but you want the right price. So you've got two mutually exclusive considerations. 
and it's really a balance. Uh, I mean, the setup one uses a percentage. Sorry, I can't remember which way around them, and, and, but but it's a question of, 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 of it's something that'll come with experience. I mean, a lot of stuff comes with experience. Uh, so um, you know, I, I would suggest that uh, you just look at what ha what you're happy with. You keep the risk value low to start with, and then well, once you're more comfortable, perhaps increase increase that. Okay, we've done parity. Um, I'm most impressed with tunnel trading already. I've had three days now, well in profit. Uh, can I look at the 101 e-course? Yes, if you want the e-course, just email me at, the, at that on the screen, tt101 at aweber.com to sign up. Uh, the 101 e-course is just a, a course I've written. Uh, it's currently free. I'm thinking of charging for it, in fact, so if you want, you want the course, um, now may be the time to get it. Uh, but this is 100 different modules emailed to you once every four days uh, designed to just help you, you know, get a feel for trading. Okay, what's next? Okay, Mark, one for you. Okay. Can you see that? I was, I've got a slight delay here, but I think we're on the what key setups are you yes, looking correct, for? Yes, correct. correct? Yep. Okay, fine. Um, so what key setups are you looking for when trading binaries? Okay, so we've just discussed tunnels. So for tunnels, I'm looking for volatility. And we get volatility when we have news events um, or other key events like expiry. So. Um, most of the tunnels I'm placing in the markets are around key news in the US. And the FTSE reacts to that far more than it does to its own um, country's news, apart from interest rates. But at the moment, interest rates are on hold, so there's not much, much action there. Uh, but certainly, expiry um, is uh, particularly triple witching. You know, there's very, very good uh, volatility around that um, around that time, and uh, that does, does uh, pay dividend <laughs> strategy. For the one touches, I link that with general analysis and swing trading. So at the moment, I'm looking for a key. I'm looking for a key peak on the FTSE and a decline. So I will be looking at opening a one touch um, further down the FTSE. Now I've just introduced um, Bet on Markets to to my subscribers. <clears throat> the reason I've done this is because uh, they offer longer-term uh, binaries. Um, last year when we were doing binaries, we had some great setups, but sometimes uh, a couple of hours or a day it just isn't uh, long enough to get uh, full advantage of these moves. And in, in a lot of cases, the market would would then sell off um, after the period closes, so you're not getting that benefit. Um, so, but I think that on our markets this year is going to be a real key feature on the service, and um, you know, there's also there's already been some good opportunities, and, and I'll, I'll be bringing these into the service once I see this key peak. Um, up and down binaries, which is the FTSE to close up, the FTSE to close down. You know, they're great again on an intraday basis when you've got some key um, some key analysis or some price action. Uh, like a like a price spike, a spike um, indicating a, a sell-off. Um, so they're always good. You can risk as little as ten, and, and they can come good towards the end of the day. Um, so they're the main things I'm looking for binaries. Okay, I'll just, I'll just deal with a few questions that come through. Um, City Index has City Trading Pro, a free app for iPod, iPhones, and iPad. Uh, Finspread, CMC, IG Index, and most others also have iPhone and Android apps. Uh, so, yeah, I hope that helps. Um, get on to the next one. I'm going to have to leave the wrong question. Uh, are you in practice camp with regard to a deflationary depression? I haven't actually read practice recently. I, I found that I got so, so miserable <laughs> reading his newsletter. Um, that it was just, you know, I was want to rush out and short everything. I just found it wasn't really very productive. Um, I do remember, I mean, I actually like his uh, his analysis, um, but he got it so wrong in the in the 90s, really. Uh, after his having crash, it just became uh, well a bit ridiculous, really. I haven't, so I haven't really been following him as much as I used to. Uh, I, we used to, in fact, exchange letters, but then I got banned for some some treasonous, uh, blasphemous, blasphemous act. I can't, I know I could criticise him about something. I think anyway. Um, Never mind. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, uh, I've been all over selling the Swissy, so I don't cover the Swissy, so I've no, I've no idea what it what it may or may not be doing. Um, sorry, Adrian. Okay. Uh, okay, that's all. We're we'll going to the next question here. 
Um, I'm curious to know if there have been one or two effective things, tricks you have used in the past to increase your discipline. And more importantly, what were or are they? Well, a couple really. I mean, one good thing is to reduce your position size, maybe by half. Uh, immediately makes the whole thing a lot far less stressful, and if it's far less stressful, it makes the emotions more relaxed, and it's much easier to be disciplined. Also, occasionally, if I've got a big position on, I tend to mess around with smaller positions, which leaves the, uh, the idiot conscious mind needs something to do, so that sort of keeps it occupied, and you can keep the bigger position in place. Uh, that's two things. Um, so I hope there's any any answers to that, Mark. No, I mean that's what I that's what I do. If I've um, if I've got a trade which I'm not 100% certain on, then I'll go in half half my usual position. Um, it makes it a lot more stress uh, a lot less stressful. And also, if you're in a good trade, um, there's no reason you can't add to a trade. Um, so the opposite, obviously, is if you're in a losing a bad trade, you never add to a bad trade, you're just going to get yourself in trouble um, and you'll probably let your stop go as well. Uh, but certainly adding to, uh, starting small and adding to a trade is the right practice to do in trading. I've got a few actually additions here from uh, on the questions. Uh, never trade from a position of fear, I think that's a good one. Uh, that's from Robin, thank you. Uh, what else? Okay, All right, we're going to move on to the question, these questions because we're running out. We're Actually, getting I've got, I mean, I, 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 John, I've got one. I mean, I've got a key one which I use as well. Um, I think a, a lot of people tend to focus on their profit and loss when they're trading. Now, one uh, one uh, recommendation I would give to you is that when you open a trade, you to be disciplined, you should be getting, you should have already predetermined stops and already a, a predetermined um, exit level. Obviously, there will be times when you need to come out a little bit earlier, but there's that, during the trade, you should not be focusing on your profit and loss, i.e., how much you're, you've made or how much you've lost. As soon as you look at that figure, you're going to open your mind up to emotions, and that's just going to distract your, um, your trading. So, you know, whatever you can do, uh, just keep your chart open or the, um, the ticker going for the opening buy, and maybe put your Hotmail or your Google uh, Mail over covering your profit and loss. You, you just don't well, the final is, I think we ought to get, get, get on to your next uh, session, Mark. So the final session is, do you have a trading strategy that takes just minutes to set up, walk away from with a high success rate, uh, kind of point and shoot? Well, that's really POM. It describes POM quite well, doesn't it, Mark? Yeah, yep, it uh, fits POM down to AT. Okay, let's go on to the, uh, um, I mean, there are, we'll come back to the other questions, but uh, Mark, over to you for different trading vehicles. Thank you.